Hi guys and welcome to this, my video on linear modelling, part of the Year 11 course. Well, the general maths course over here in Australia, but linear modelling is used everywhere. So I'm pretty sure wherever you're watching it, it could be useful. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, my videos are meant to be light-hearted, but uh, pretty much smash mathematics for you. So I tend to teach in a little bit of a different style. Hopefully, if you've seen my previous videos, you would agree they were useful. Now, can I ask a favor before I go any further? Can you head to uh, YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel? Very few people watch these videos, and uh, the only way I know that people actually genuinely watch is with them clicking subscribe, all right? So if you can do that, it it just literally makes my day, which is very, very sad, but it actually makes my day. And of course, head over to mathsguru.com. Free to sign up, but these videos are all there, absolutely aligned to Cambridge. And again, thank you, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. You guys rock. Uh, with worked examples, what else have I got there? Downloadable notes, time codes, uh, VCAR, past paper questions. It's all on there for you to use. And tell your mates and your teacher if you can, all right? Some teachers are using some pretty ropey... Uh, Online resources out there. Hopefully mine is actually one of the better ones out there. All right, enough of that. Should we get on? I think so too. All right, learning objectives. Yeah, they're there. You can read them if you want to and pause. And at any point, pause these videos if you want to. Now, in our previous video, we went through the idea now that Barry hates us and we've now got to rethink y equals mx plus c and have y equals a plus bx. Okay, we can do that. Remembering that a is my intercept or my y-axis intercept, and b is the value of my gradient, all right? So again, that's really important, and that's only true, guys, if the y is on its own and the x term is at the end. So many exams will try and trip you up by writing things like, oh, I don't know, let's see, y minus 8 equals 3x. If they write it that way, it's a trick. They are trying to trick you. You have to get the y on its own, so you would turn that into y equals 8 plus 3x, and therefore, we would know that the 8 was my y-axis intercept, and the 3 was my gradient. Yes, which means that for every 1 across, I go 3 up, 1 across, and 3 up, 1 across, 3 up. All right, that was the recap. And if you've got no idea what I'm talking about, head to mascara.com and you can watch the videos. Now, linear modeling basically just means, can you read a straight line graph? Or do you understand what a straight line graph means? Now, the first thing I'm gonna say here is actually, I want you to imagine that a plant has been purchased from a garden, garden center, from a garden center. And it starts its life in a plant pot at five centimeters tall. If it grows at six centimeters per week for 10 weeks, we can actually model it using a graph. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say actually is that part of the graph shouldn't exist. And the reason being is I cannot A, have a negative time. And you're going to say, what do you mean? Well, my graph at the moment don't have labels on it. It doesn't have labels on it. So this is a really, really bad graph. And I need to put my axis labels on it because otherwise it's going to be wrong and my equation will be wrong in a moment. So let's see, what do we say? Uh, it grows at six centimeters per week. So that now means we know that this here is measured in weeks and so is probably time. And it says it grows, what is it, six centimeters per week. So we now know that the chances are that says height in centimeters. Now, the reason this is important is because I am no longer going to write my equation as y equals anything. And it is definitely not going to have the letter x in it. Because if you do, you're actually going to get this wrong. Because your equation now is going to have to be h equals something and then a T in it. And if you write the X and the Y in, you're actually going to lose marks. That's very true in VCAR next year, all right? If you don't have the right letters on there, and I know, guys, that we get so used to writing Y and X, all right? And we do a really bad job of giving you examples where they don't, but that's probably where we're doing it now, all right? So if I now look at this, for every one square across, I can imagine that my plant is growing, how many centimeters does it say? Uh, six centimeters per week, all right? So that should have gone up six. And then again, I go across and it should go up six and go across and go up six and go across and go up six. So really, my question is giving me the gradient there, right? So because it says six centimeters per week. So whenever you have a per something, the chances are that they are trying to tell you your gradient. And I don't want to rush forward, but linear modeling just turns a real life situation into a graph. Let's have a look at this, right? Why do we need to know the equation of a straight line? Well, well, to predict values, really, all right? What if I wanted to know how big my plant was after 15 weeks? 
Well, at the moment, my graph doesn't give me that information, does it? It only tells me pretty much up to 10 weeks. So if I can come up with a formula and I can put in a T value equals in a situation 15, then I can work out what my plant will be. Wow, right? So again, it's just a little bit for a year 12, but the reason we draw these graphs is to help us to predict values that we may not know. Now, whenever you draw these things, remember, as I say here, always, always use the correct letters in the equations that link the uh, <coughs> uh, axes. So in this situation, H and T. Find the y-axis intercept, find the gradient, and then write the correct equation or correct equation, right? So we can find the y-axis intercept here. It told us we can find the gradient if we wanted to by doing across and up. But again, the question already told us. And then just make sure that you write it into y equals a plus bx. Here is an example. Water is pumped into a partially full tank. Okie dokie, we can do this. The graph gives the volume of water v in liters after t minutes. So you'll notice now my graph has a v and t. So my formula would have to have a v and a t in it, not an x and a y. How much water is in the tank at the start, right? So can we read off what this point is? Well, we know that's gone from zero to 400 in two little squares. So the chances are that's 200 per little square. So I would say there that that's going to be 200 and don't forget your units, liters, right? How did you know it was liters? Tell me, the volume in liters. How much water is in the tank after 10 minutes? All right, well, we can do that. So I'm gonna find 10 minutes on my graph. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna read across. And there we go. So 1,200 liters. The tank holds 2,000 liters. How long does it take to fill? Well, in that situation, it's saying, well, find 2,000 liters on your graph, go across and then read off the time. And that in situation, would be 18 minutes. So all you're doing here, is it 18 minutes? Yeah. All you're doing is you're reading off information off the graph, and that's a really vital skill. Find the equation of the line in terms of V and T, all right? So we know that the general equation of a straight line is Y equals A plus BX, but we can't use Y. Why? Because we got a V. So V is on my vertical axis. A, what's my intercept? Oh, well, you already found out, 200 plus B, I need to find my gradient. Well, that's okay. All we gotta do is find two points on my line and then work out how many across we go and how many up we go. Well, actually, I'm gonna choose one of the easiest points. I'm gonna choose that one there and that one there. So I know that I'm going two minutes across and I'm going 200 liters up, not 400. Again, a lot of people get tricked there. So I've gone up 200 and I've gone across two. So my gradient, is equal to 200 divided by two or 100. So there we go. So it's gonna be giving me 100 times, do I use X? Nope, because what letters on my X axis? T, and there we go. So that there is the equation of that line. So I can now find at any time T, if I know a time T, I can find the volume that is going to be in that um, tank. At what, or, oh sorry, use the equation to calculate the volume in the water after 15 minutes. Now a lot of people go, well can't I just read it from the graph? Not particularly accurately, you can't know. So what we're gonna do is it, they're here saying let t equals 15. So v is equal to 200 plus 100 times 15. I could do that in my head, but I'm not going to. So I'm gonna go back to my calculator screen. He says clicking on the image once again. Oh, I don't have one, so control, doc, add a calculator, 200 plus 100 times 15, hit enter, it gives me 1,700. And don't forget your units, which is liters, they tell you that. At what rate is the water pumped into the tank? That is how many liters are pumped into the tank each minute. Now a rate basically is just a gradient. For most of these questions, it's just gonna be the gradient. And you've already worked out the gradients. You've worked out the gradient there as 100. So therefore, the rate is 100 liters per minute. And how did I know the units? Because it was liters per minute, right? So you just basically read them off the graph. There we go, that was one example. Um, I think this is the same example. I was just gonna split it over into different things. Right, there we go. Petrol is pumped into a partially full storage tank. The graph shows the volume of petrol V liters after T minutes, okay? So again, pretty much the same. We've got the volume and we've got the time. So I'm gonna actually put on there V 
and I'm going to put on T to make sure it doesn't trick me. Where are we? How much petrol is in the tank at the start? Okay, so I'm going to write 4,000 liters. How much petrol is in the tank after 100 minutes? Ooh, how much is in the tank after 100 minutes? That's going to be really, really hard to read accurately. So after 100 minutes, let's assume it is 7,000 liters. And again, sometimes Cambridge, you don't necessarily help people here. Right, uh, the tank holds 10,000 liters. How long does it take to fill? Well, for that one, we go to 10,000 liters. We go across and we go down. So I think 200 minutes. Yep. So again, nice and easy at the moment. We're just reading off information of the graph. Find the equation of the lines in terms of V and T. Well, okay, again. So we now know that rather than using Y equals A plus BX, we're going to use Y, which is V, is equal to A. A, what's A? Our A is my crossing point there. So that's going to be 4,000. Plus my gradient of my line. How am I going to find out my gradient? Well, let's use this point here. And I know that point there. So if we go across and we go up, right? So we've got 200 across. And how many are we going up? Well, we're going from 4,000 to 10,000, which is 6,000. So firing up my calculator, 6, 1, 2, 3, divided by 200 gives me 30. So my gradient there is 30 times t. And it's positive because my graph is sloping up. Yay! Now, why do we have an equation? Because we're going to use it to predict a value. Of course we are. Use the equation to calculate the volume of the water after 150 minutes. All right, so v is equal to 4,000 plus 30 times 150. All right, so 4123 plus 30 times 150 gives me 8,500 liters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for talking to me. Uh, what rate is the water pumped into the tank? Oh my goodness, again, the rate for these questions is always going to be the gradient. And so in this situation, the rate is going to be 30 watt liters per minute. Yep, yeah, 30 liters per minute. Sorry about my handwriting, but I've just got to a really knobbly bit on my iPad. And ultimately that there is sort of the crux of all the questions you're ultimately going to end up doing. This one's got a negative gradient though. The value of new cars depreciates with time. Now depreciates, so now we're not going to have. So ahead of my, I'm not thinking about y equals a plus bx. This is going to be y equals a minus bx as my gradient is going down. V and T. What was the value of the car when it was new? Well, again, not particularly easy to read, not particularly great scale, but let's assume it was $27,500. What was the value of the car when it was five years old? Well, they gave us a dot, that was nice. So in that situation, that would be $15,000. Find the equation of the line in terms of V and T. <sighs> okay, so again, we're going to use y is equal to a minus bx. That's going to have to be v, because the what is it? The value in this situation. What is a? Oh, a was my intercept. We read my intercept, so that was going to be 27,500 minus my gradient. How am I going to find my gradient? Well, they've already sort of helped us here, because I can draw a right angle triangle there. It has dropped $10,000. In how many years? One, two, three, four. So I'm going to do 10,000 divided by four. That's going to give me $2,500. And times by X, nope, T. At what rate does the car depreciate with time? It depreciates at $2,500. Now, we don't actually have to put the minus in that situation because depreciate means it's going down. So in that situation, we would simply put $2,500 per year. And again, it's important to make sure you got the units in there because it had dollars and years. So there's my dollars and there's my years. Make sure. When does the equation predict the car will have a zero value? Oh my goodness, that got hard really. So what they're saying is, in what year will the car be worth nothing? So in that situation, what does, oh, well, V is zero, isn't it? Because that means it's going to have no value. So I'm now trying to find that zero is equal to 27,500 minus 2,500 times T. How am I going to do that? I could use the solve function on my calculator, couldn't I? I think so too. So I'm going to put solve, comma, t. Whenever I have an equation, I always use the solve function. So menu, 
uh, algebra, uh, so many 3, 1 in that situation, and you just type in the, uh, the equation, so I'm going to do 0 equals 27500 minus 2500 times by t, comma t. Now, the comma t is there to basically say solve for the time, and therefore it came up with 11, so therefore 11 years. So my car's going to be worth absolutely nothing after 11 years. Wow, this stuff is amazing. And believe it or not, that's another video done. Thank you very much for watching. What was that, 15 minutes? Hopefully it's been useful. Key takeaway, do not forget the X and the Y. Right? Don't call them X and Y, call them whatever it is that you need to do. Make sure you know how to do the gradient and the intercept and then predict. I'm done. Thank you very much for this video. There are more coming and I look forward to seeing you in those. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just let me know that people are watching and it's actually worth doing these videos. Head over to Maths Guru, sign up for free. Tell your mates and your teachers. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a day. Thanks very much for watching. Please take care, stay safe and hopefully I'll see you again.